Let's do some news. My name is Mike VAK Phony. Today's date is November 20th, 2020. The time is 2.28 p.m. And today we got some news. Missing last week was uh, busy with nudes. Uh, so stuff is kind of, stuff is kind of, you know, uh, uh, stacked up since I've been gone. Uh, first off, hello chat. You guys have been with me, uh, past couple days already, but still, hello, hello, hello. Uh, 2, 2.28 p.m., that's right, uh, Pacific time, Pacific time, Pacific time. Um, today, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about GlitchCon, because that happened last Friday, right, ish, right? Uh, I have a lot of I have a lot of clips from uh, from Glitch, GlitchCon that I'm, I'm very very uh, excited to show you guys. Uh, we're gonna talk about Game Awards nominees are out. Talk about that a little bit because we we usually cover the uh, the results, so we might as well go on top of the nominees, so you know what to expect. <sighs> Last of Us too, uh, and uh, and we have Monster Cat making some uh, backtracking on some promotions that they did that uh, was gonna be on the news, but now it's taking a turn. So. I'm uh, looking forward to that because that is developing. But first, but first, Among Us is getting a new map. <laughs> Among Us is getting a new map. It looks so beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> we also could see that there's some skin stuff that's showing us. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. People are already dissecting the hell out of this image, trying to figure out what is what, what are the stations and all that stuff. We have a station here, we have a station here and here, and maybe one of these things over here. I'm sure every panel here has got a, a task associated with it at some point. We have a mustache, that's right. Picture of events, that's right, where, where Mike's hiding. It's right in the middle of the room, too, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, this is all we get. It's just one, one room. One room preview. Now, they are going to uh, make... Uh, 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 Make some more announcements and do some more at uh, at the Game Awards, which is on December tenth. Uh, so, I well, I'm looking forward to that. They did decide they're not going to do Among Us two. They said, you know what, we're going to go and stick with uh, stick with Among Us one and c continue developing on that with all this money that we got. And uh, I'm glad to see that happen. So Henry Stickman, that's a map from Henry Stickman. Who's that? Um, See, also, Brothgar got access to the new Oni content. That's right, yes, and Clunkers actually sent me a message on that, uh, asking if I got access to the alpha for Oxygen Occluded. Uh, I believe that's for their new um, multi-planet, multi-colony system, right? Something like that. Uh, so, I thought that was actually already, like, being released. But, you know, every time they have a pretty, pretty big... Uh, uh, Oxygen included update. You know, I try to jump in, so we'll probably we'll probably take a look at that uh, later. But speaking of the game awards, let's go ahead and see what the nominees are. On December 10th, the world will come together to celebrate video games at the Game Awards, streaming live everywhere. For best performance, the nominees are Ashley Johnson as Ellie, The Last of Us Part Two. Laura Bailey as Abby, The Last of Us Part Two. In the category of Best Art Direction, The Last of Us Part Two. For Best Score in Music, The Last of Us Part Two. The Best Audio Design nominees are The Last of Us Part Two. Innovation and Accessibility, The Last of Us Part Two. In the category of Best Narrative, The Last of Us Part Two. Best Role Playing Game, The Last of Us Part Two. Best Fighting Game, The Last of Us Part Two. For Best Simulation or Strategy Game, The Last of Us Part Two. Next up, Best Sports Racing, The Last of Us Part Two. Best Esports Team, The Last of Us Part Two. Best Esports Coach, The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> the Best Esports Event, The Last of Us Part Two. And our last Esports category, Best Esports Host, The Last of Us Part Two. Game of the Year, The Last of Us Part Two. Who do you think should win? Follow us at the Game Awards on Twitter for updates and tune in live on December 10th for a global celebration of The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> we'll see you then. December 10th. On December 10th. <laughs> but hey, you think, you think they're joking though. You think they're joking, but check this out. So this is their category list, right? You can just type in a game and it'll pull up, you know, what category that, that, uh, that game is in. Um, hold on, let's go view categories here. That's what's up with that? It's 10 FPS, no, 3 FPS. So if I type in Hades, right, it's gonna show me everywhere that Hades is 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 nominated, right? 
and they're nominated for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight awards. Uh, and if you type in Last of Us, they are also nominated for eight awards. In some cases, they are indeed uh, twice. So I think for like best, see, oh, actually, they're not all on here because there's best um, narrative. It would be a narrative. It'd be under voice. Um, best voice actress acting. Why is this thing got to load? Um, that's just, yeah, it's a storytelling. So actually, not all of the not all of them are up up here. But um, what's the link to that video? It's a local link, straight up. It's it's like <laughs> it was posted in Discord. I had to download it, so uh, I can't give you guys a link right now unless you, unless you guys can have access to C colon slash. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the, uh, the, the the there's a lot of nominations for for a couple of games. It's not necessarily just The Last of Us. But there, it does seem like their their filter doesn't doesn't necessarily show uh, all of the awards The Last of Us was nominated for because they do, they do have two for best um, a best voice actor and whatnot. So um, <clears throat> Last of Us uh, PlayStation <laughs> ah there thank you Blam thank you so much uh, we are gonna cover this just like we do every year we talk about the game awards after the fact. But just so you guys can see what's on the list here, uh, we'll go up to the top game of the year. We have Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, um, Hades, Animal Crossing, and Last of Us Part Two. Of course, uh, a lot of people are rooting for Hades. Hades is a fantastically developed game uh, on a lot of fronts. Uh, I, it's nice that Doom Eternal is up there, but I feel like Doom, like Doom 2016, was like that was the pinnacle of of this series. Doom Eternal is like kind of iterates further on that but doesn't necessarily uh uh maybe not necessarily deserving over a game like hades uh shit i would even say animal crossing now i've not played the last of us part two um so i don't know how that fares against some of the other ones so we'll have to see you see how is anything with acronym got up for any awards this any awards this year it's, although i have heard that ghost of uh tsushima is a really good game though so so yeah, Hades narrative was awesome. The voice acting was amazing. The gameplay is fantastic. Uh, the art style is great. I mean, there's just so there's so much going for it. But you know, I mean, we have a sequel. We have a remake. Uh, we have another sequel, and we have a sequel. You know how these game awards really, really love to latch onto an IP and ride that shit to the grave. <laughs> Uh, going further, we're not going to go through all of them, but just you can see, Best Game Direction, Best Narrative. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is in a lot of these. A lot. And so is Hades, actually, like we like I showed you guys earlier. It's basically like like four or five games that are that are present in pretty much everything here. Um, best Audio Design, Half-Life Alex. I actually thought that Half-Life Alex was probably deserving of a nomination for Game of the Year, but it's a VR title, so maybe they don't think it's uh, has enough of a reach. But it would be nice if a VR title won, just to kind of further promote virtual reality video gaming you know um ghost is fantastic one of the best soul like games to date good i know i've seen footage of it it's beautiful like it's a beautiful game um and great gameplay too uh, visually uh and we see we have best performances you know games for impact game for impact is typically like you know somebody that a storyline that relates to like uh, current culture events or something um i think i think celeste won this last year maybe if i could be wrong um, but typically they go for stories or games that have a story that is, uh, um, that's related to like current events or something. So, uh, best ongoing, uh, you can see this is where like, you know, Apex Legends, Destiny 2 games that are constantly updated Fortnite. It's basically the same games almost every year. It seems, <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I, I do feel like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's I think it's actually kind of accurate. Um, my vote for this one. We'll go to No Man's Sky. Uh, this year, Plague Inc. Yeah, Plague Inc. Uh, you know what, though? Hold on a sec. One thing I didn't check, and I should have. I joked about it online here. Let me see. Among Us. Best mobile game, best multiplayer. <sighs> I'll take it. What else is in the best multiplayer category? Oh, Fall Guys. Okay, okay. If fucking Fall Guys gets this shit over... Let me see what else is on here. Okay, Valorant. <laughs> Come on. Call of Duty. Come on. Come on. Among Us is the biggest. The biggest of the year. Come on. And also Animal Crossing's multiplayer is trash. Look at his trash. The amount of bullshit you have to go through in order to go to another island. I mean, I now don't get me wrong. I I love, I love, love, love Animal Crossing. 
uh, it was my it was my game to like calm down and go to sleep for the first three months of quarantine. I played it every single night. I I did shit, but like watered flowers and try to like you know make different types of flowers. I'm mixing them up and all that stuff, right? Um, but my god, dude, if you try to do anything with the multiplayer, it was like somebody's leaving your island. You have to leave the dialogue screen, and then you have to fucking wait for them to fly, and you have to wave. Oh my god, it's so much work. So no, they do not deserve to even be nominated for this. Um, but once you're in, it's great. It's great with your friend, all this stuff. But still, uh, where's phasmophobia? I know where is where is phasmophobia. I think phasophobia maybe maybe it's too new or something. You know what though? I also wonder like if phasophobia is just not picking up as 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 uh not picking up as much popularity as you know. I mean it's bigger than Fall Fall Guys, isn't it? I think so. Fall Guys early access, so maybe yeah. Uh, do come out this year Among Us. Sus. Yeah, I, I think Among Us definitely deserves this for sure. What are the multiplayer? I bet I bet in the uh, mobile department, it's probably. Uh, probably some, like, Diablo, like, ripoff, some League ripoff, and, uh, probably Fortnite, and, we know Among Us, what's the last one? Let's go take a look and see. God, this site, what is this site's problem? It's ridiculous. Let me see, best mobile, what was Among Us? There we go, narrow it down. Best mobile game. Alright, let's see. It is Loading. Uh, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, oh, okay, oh shit, okay, I was, oh, well, Legends of Terror is on there, um, okay, now Among Us is a great game, but Genshin Impact has definitely, like, it's, that's, that's a big mobile title, that's a big mobile title, uh, if you haven't played, uh, now, I don't play Genshin Impact, but, um, my friend does, and so I, I've watched, I watched him play a lot this past weekend when I was taking his place, um, and like, it is a beautiful game and it, and it plays just as well on phone as it does on PC. Um, obviously there's like a scaling issue. You get the like 4k graphics, all that stuff. You're going to, you know, you're going to turn up the graphics and all that shit. But for a phone game, it plays really, really well. Um, I don't know about call of duty mobile, but yeah, breath of the waifu. Exactly. Genshin impact. I, that's, that's a pretty formidable opponent opponent there for among us. I still feel like, I still feel like among us deserves it still. Still, Valorant is a four by four v four FPS with various skills in your character, like a mix of counter. Yeah, that's right, like an Overwatch. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, ask Rich Campbell about it <laughs> with the mustache. Five v five. Yeah, it's very, it's very much like uh, it's, it's kind of like a Call of Duty, a Counter Strike slash uh, Overwatch uh, mix. It actually it plays a lot like it too. Um, so yeah, those are your nominations. We'll check in after the tenth to. Uh, to see what the results are um but yeah probably going to be the last of us too <laughs> probably i'm guessing I'm guessing they're going to take a lot a lot home you're nominated for like eight or probably ten things actually because some of the stuff didn't show up in that filter uh they're probably gonna take home a number of things so we'll see is there an award for like game that won won the most awards it's got to be right you have to slap another one on top of it we'll see <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, God, what do I go to next? It's fucking hard. Let me see. Well, first, let's talk about some of the small stuff. All right. Are you guys aware of a new streaming service? I know we, we cover we cover a new streaming service like every four months here on the show. Uh, but you guys know that Streamlabs has a new streaming service that they're putting out. Extreme platform. Not Twitch. What? Yes, I actually, I found out about it. I found out about it when I uh, logged into uh, into uh, Streamlabs and I got a drop down and it said, have you tried, you know, checking out uh, uh, Lucra. Lucra.live, you go check it out yourself. Luke, L-U-C-R-A dot live is a pay-per-view live streaming platform. You sell tickets to your event uh, and then you host the event. This is actually a really good idea because there are there are already a lot of um, now maybe this is not a good idea for like somebody who just wants to stream, but think of how many uh, streaming concerts have been you know put out right now like over the past like nine months or so. Uh, th this is obviously filling a need. So this will allow everybody 
to create and and it's and you could just go create an event and go and just you know da, 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 and then upload an image do all this stuff uh you can set the price let me see actually how much how see five hundred dollars well let me do that how about uh one oh, okay oh five dollars or less okay i'm glad we did that test <laughs> It's like, whoa, whoa, buddy, $100,000. No, 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 $10,000. We got to drop down a little bit. Um, so yeah, $5 or less. But still, this is, do they allow not safe for work content? That part, I don't know. I don't know if they do. Uh, yes, the FAQ does say they take a 30% cut. And some will restream it on Twitch. It does. This definitely feel fills uh, a niche. Like there are there are bands that want to perform. And even in their preview here, even the little preview video, they actually show that there are bands that are performing and all that stuff. Um, or they're just trying to demo that that is something you could use it for. Uh, there's a number of other things. I mean, maybe you know myself as a photographer, I could say you know you can um, buy a ticket to like watch a photo shoot. You can see how it goes live. Right. Um, and, you know, obviously I, as the host, would have like a microphone on or something like that, like a lav mic. So I can, you know, tell, explain what it is I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, just to add a little bit more stress to a shoot, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, this is this is certainly a uh, this is something that that definitely has um, an audience. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see how this thing actually pans out and see if people end up using it. Uh, in the future, maybe I will too. I don't know. Justin TV is the place I went to watch restreamed. But yeah, I know. <laughs> Pay per views, exactly. Um, there is a flag for mature content in there, but I wonder what to what length they consider. Uh, let me just go to the FAQ here. Let me see. Uh, how is can I place an event on website? I've sold tickets and how do I start my live event? Create an event now. What? Okay. Um, where do you see the? FAQ on that. I mean, we'll have to come back and take a look at it, but uh, you know, terms, contact, pricing. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so, sorry, you're taking a live stream for free or join, or, or join Prime for additional features and more advantageous revenue model. And so, this is just basically you could get more uh, options for your uh, for your streams. So you could be a premium streamer. Buy your way into partnership. You know what I'm saying? Buy your, buy your way into uh, having a partner, a partner account, partner options and all that stuff. Similar to what monster cat thought they could do moving on speaking of buying your way into uh, a service affiliate status or whatever um so this is this is a developing story right uh I, it started off with this link here that i had in my news ready to go uh streamers baffled by new twitch option to buy affiliate status so we're gonna start at the beginning we're gonna get to, i know some of you guys already know the rest we talked about it in Discord, or maybe you follow the news. But we're going to start at the beginning with this. They come out and say that they have, um, if you were to purchase Monster Cat Gold. Now, Monster Cat is a uh, effectively a label where you can uh, get access to music that is DMCA free, so long as you pay for the Monster Cat Gold service, which is a five dollar monthly recurring payment. Um, then. You can use that music on your channel. You submit the channel to them so that for whatever reason, I guess in the future, if they find that you're using your music, their music somewhere else or whatever, I don't know how that works. Uh, it seems like a whole, it seems like a, it seems like a, you knowing where you're using it seems like an extra amount of work that, that, yeah. Um, but you can use this music and then, you know, whatever. Now, Monster Cat typically has a, a there's like one, one kind of sound that Monster Cat music typically has, and it's kind of revolves somewhere around like you know, uh, um, kind of like a like glitch hop to like a dubstep somewhere in between there. Like if you if you've heard a few Monster Cat songs, you've pretty much heard them all. There are some great ones, mind you. I do love some of the tracks on there, and I know like Protostar's on there and all that. Uh, but there is definitely a, a type a type that belongs in that uh, uh, in that Monster Cat genre. Um, and so they come out saying, if you purchase uh, uh, Monster Cat Gold, you can fast track yourself to affiliate status. And they even have an FAQ saying that you could go and and uh, sign up and just sign up for affiliate status and get affiliate status. So this is like making everyone like, whoa, okay, you could just like buy your way into affiliate status now. Uh, and I understand that <clears throat> you need to have like what, like three, three, three uh, viewers to, uh, on average, in order to get affiliate status when you first start out, right? And you and you may think, 
it's too it's like it's not gonna just because you get monster cat gold and you get affiliate doesn't mean you're gonna magically have viewers uh but that's you shouldn't um you shouldn't discredit those who have worked hard to even get to that three viewer viewership on average on number because it, it is hard it's hard it's hard to and i know this as somebody who digs in to the bottom of just chatting and music uh, 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 categories on twitch um there are people that i see there regularly who are hustling and they're trying the hardest to get viewers and they're trying and so like when they get to that three viewer mark like that's an accomplishment it's a milestone that shows that they're growing and so those people are obviously and rightfully upset that you know there was an option an alleged option to be able to just buy your way into the service well it turns out that wasn't the deal at all monster cat backpedals on controversial twitch affiliate fast track offer uh so it turns out yeah they just didn't have either they did not have uh, a deal with twitch to fast track anybody to affiliate status uh or they just made it up right now i seriously doubt it's the latter i i feel like maybe they can uh maybe they thought they had something going and then they didn't i'm not sure what this is all kind of happening happening right now in real time uh just last night we had we had an announcement or a tweet from them but <clears throat> their faq page has like disappeared let's open this up here and take a look this is the original tweet uh it says monster cat and twitch are teaming up there's no question about that part right monster cat and twitch are teaming up to bring fast track affiliate status for monster cat goal subscribers in that sense, there's very little wiggle room <laughs> for what they mean, right? It's very hard to interpret this in any other, any other fashion other than you guys are partnering, and if I get Monster Cat Gold, I can fast track my way to affiliate status. Uh, so this gold provides thousands of songs and all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and so we go to Monster Cat, Twitch Affiliate, oh, page not found. So they have definitely backtracked on this. They did follow up and they said, to clarify our original post, all current gold subscribers must meet Twitch's affiliate criteria. Our goal was never to take away from the achievements that affiliates worked hard worked for in their time streaming on Twitch. And then it says, we'll be announcing opportunities that benefit the entire affiliate and partner community. So like Crash says, maybe they were spinning it as, and this will get you affiliate faster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe maybe it's a comma that they missed or something, right? Fast track by not having a faster track. So so realistically, getting affiliate status on your own and getting affiliate status while you have Monster Cat Gold is exactly the same. It's just on one hand you have Monster Cat Gold. <laughs> on the other hand, you have you have not. <laughs> so. This is a pretty significant fuck up on Monster Cat's side um, because this absolutely generated a number of I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of people that signed up for Monster Cat Gold thinking that this is going to, you know, fast track them to, to affiliate status. And now they're finding out that it's not true. That's not the way it works. Seems like to me that they had a deal and then they gave in uh, to the pointless outrage. You do you think that's the case? Do you think that they they came in and they said they had a deal, but then the affiliates that worked for it got upset because I that's them walking back on money. Like that's a pretty significant thing to just you know. <laughs> I feel like this was a backpedal and they're trying to disguise it. Oops, but it's not what we meant. I mean, technically they can probably show that it increases your odds. Then that's what they probably should have said. Uh, there actually there also is. Let me see if I can find the. Uh, it's actually in this article here. Uh, somebody actually grabbed the uh, screenshots here. I'm gonna open this up, and you can see it says. Uh, so this guy says. So Monster Cat just sort of lied. First screenshot from what I what what it used to look like. Latest uh, video in my YouTube channel. Second screenshot for what it looks like now. Essentially now the deal is buy Monster Cat, achieve affiliate status, and then you can be the affiliate, huh? So it says right here, uh, it says click the button below to save your gold account. It only takes two minutes. And then step three, apply for affiliate status. Once your gold account has been active for at least 30 days, log in and navigate to my gold features. Select a section. Click the purple button that reads apply for Twitch affiliate and follow the instructions to enter your Twitch channel name. Uh, existing Monster Cat gold members, blah, blah, blah. So OSS oh, says we'll be able to immediately apply for affiliate status as long as your account has been active for 30 days. This seems really, really, really uh, 
like they're trying to pull one over on people. Like, especially when you read the FAQ like this, like it, whoever made the actual post must have misunderstood. It's got to be. But also the FAQ, the FAQ also shows that they're telling you that you can go and apply. They're saying apply for affiliate status. But why would they even? I mean, I guess you could argue, well, yeah, they're just applying. They're just giving you a link to affiliate status. But no, they're putting this in the context of after your gold account has been active for at least 30 days. So they're putting it in context that then you can apply for affiliate status as if A affects B, when in fact, it's not the case at all. This seems too good to be true to bait people. It feels like a bait. It says apply. It says apply. But again, context matters. Show the Moscow Gold uh, member banner on your stream to get more subscribers. Exactly. <laughs> It says Twitch will email you with an invitation to their affiliate program within a few business days. Then you'll be able to earn revenue from your streams right away. See, it doesn't even say, it doesn't even say if you qualify or if you are approved, Twitch will email you. This, this is, I mean, this looks like really shitty business right here, guys. Like I'm trying, I, I'm trying to find a way to make it logically like, you know, maybe, uh, like maybe, but I mean, in the context of this FAQ where they show, they tell you gold, then apply, then you will get affiliate status. Where's the wiggle room on that? Um, plot twist, social media person created the FAQ. Ready to the last part seals the deal. Yeah, exactly. The wording claims to, to grant you affiliate status after 30 days in application. So I'm not just reading this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it says. Let's see what it says now. So it says, uh, now it says, once your gold is active for at least 30 days, da, 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 and it says existing model, okay, uh, apply, apply. Okay, here we go. Once you have submitted your affiliate application, please allow for a few business days before receiving a response. Twitch reviews all submissions manually to ensure users are in good standing on the platform. Once accepted to the program, you'll receive an invitation to your email uh, inbox linked to your Twitch account. So now, now this is, this part makes sense. It still seems shitty in the context of like you could get you get gold and then you could apply you apply for this. It still seems kind of shitty. Let me see. Uh we'll get the get famous bots tell you to get Mazda got gold now instead of that website. Exactly. Uh the argument of the layperson is gonna be real important here. Yeah, I applied last night. I read through the EULA and associated links before I got my hopes up, then I got my hopes up and then bought gold for my streaming channel. Well, I mean at least you have access to a ton of music. There's a, there's a ton of music on there you have access to. I mean there really is like thousands and thousands of songs that they have available to you. And they all they also on their Spotify, they have um uh, a Spotify channel, they have like playlists set up. So you can no, it's, it's still a good service for five. I I have I pay five dollars to, to them just in case I ever want to use their music for something. Um, but but still, though, there are a lot of people like you who are looking who are looking at this as a means to get affiliate status. Um, even though we know that it doesn't necessarily grant you users like viewers, uh, but still like it's a milestone thing. Uh, let's see, maybe uh, they have some viewers that will come to your channel, so you'll fulfill... <laughs> it seems bad. Anyhow, dude, yeah, dude, Neo Trotus, if, that would, if they did that, that would be like the worst thing ever. But now they're botting the system. Oh my god, can you imagine? Uh, but you have, to have a, you have to maintain like a few users for uh, a period of time. So this is, this is as of like last night. Like this stuff is happening right now. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see... Uh, see more here you go update monster has now deleted the entire page that had details formerly here they've also removed references uh to getting twitch affiliate status on their goal page which literally used to say twitch affiliate status so let's open this up real quick um there we go let me see so it says enjoy perks oh yeah enjoy additional perks boy i mean it just it just keeps keeps layering it on man the evidence just keeps on stacking up uh, so it says right here, it says enjoy additional perks, including early uh, early listing access, Twitch affiliate status, shop discounts, all that stuff. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Ah, well, I, I assume that we're going to hear more about this because um, like this is real money involved. Right? This isn't like free sign up and we got your email address kind of thing. Like this is like people pay five bucks 
And five bucks, I mean, that, five bucks could buy you, like, you know, a sandwich or something. So uh, people upset. They want that sandwich. And uh, they got duped. So I'm sure we're probably going to see another response probably sometime soon. Uh, it is Friday late for them. So we probably won't hear anything until next week. Uh, but I'd imagine at some point they need to reach out to the people who signed up over this um, you know, over this period of time. That tuna melt, exactly. Uh, those pre-stream memes. Uh, the, uh, I'm sure that they're going to offer a refund. I hope they offer a refund to anybody that signed up through this program uh, or anybody that requests it. Well, actually, let's go ahead and take a look because this is happening right now in real time. Let's go ahead and see uh, what, what if they've said anything uh, today. Let me see. We're driving the weekend. The window's down there. Okay, so they're promoting music. Sure. Uh, they're retweeting some old stuff. Sure. It's going to make it very difficult to find this uh, these responses here. Okay, music, music. Okay, well, they haven't really said much. So, I guess we'll just wait and see what uh, what they decide to do with all that money. <laughs> but they definitely goofed. And I, I guess we, we may never find out exactly who. Was it the social person who also was writing all the FAQ? Who's also designing the actual sign up gold the gold page uh or was it a deal that fell through uh or what i don't think that they lied to us like i was if it was a monster cat just straight up lied like it feels like that it reads like that uh <laughs> but i cannot I, I i can't i no i i refuse to believe that a company in this social space would dare do something so stupid no way just watch for that position opens up a monster cat suit that's right that's right, man. Premature launch or something, and the final deal wasn't signed. That could be it. Could be it for sure. And maybe they don't want to say. You know, initially, I I thought that this was a uh, monster cat twisting Twitch's arm. I saved that link, the first link, because I thought I was like, I was like, you know, maybe monster cat approached Twitch and they were like, hey, we will give you guys, um, uh. I don't know, maybe give you guys access to this music or something. Uh, if we could do this gold thing. I don't know. Maybe they worked out a deal because they have they have a ton of music and there's a ton of DMCA shit going on right now. So maybe they went that way with it. You know, it's like we got all this music and you want to keep people happy and you're really bad at that. So maybe we could come up with some kind of deal. They sign up for gold, they get affiliate status, you get more people using your service, and then they're happy because they get music and all this stuff. That's what I thought was going on. But then everything, everything flipped around. <laughs> everything changed overnight. Yeah, something does smell. Something does smell fishy. Uh, I thought that too. There's no way $5 a month from a separate company would buy you affiliate, but it stayed in plain language that it did. That's right. Yep, you're not in the wrong. Speaking of DMCA, ooh, we're on it today with those things. Uh, so DMCA stuff is still happening. Uh, it's, still, it's still developing. It's going to continue developing as long as people are still getting hit with mutes or takedowns on VODs uh, that either exist or are deleted. S-Fan. S-Fan is a great example. S-Fan says, One of my Ocarina of Time VODs got muted because of someone who sampled Gerudo Valley theme for a trap remix that was released four days after my stream by an artist who literally has four monthly listeners on Spotify. It says right here, Trap Ocarina by... DJ Labonga. <laughs> Trap Ocarina, November 13th. There it is. DJ Labonga, four monthly listeners. <laughs> Muted audio. Uh, so this is just, just one, one example here, but it seems to me like, uh, I mean, it's pretty easy to sample something and then upload it. Because it's easy to get shit on Spotify. It's easy to get shit into the content ID like network, right? Uh, obviously, that person doesn't own the rights to that sample. They didn't clear that sample. So that person, DJ Labonga, is in the wrong. Uh, but <laughs> it is a great song. It's true. Uh, but yeah, they... <laughs> it seems too easy to troll somebody, right? To troll, troll, troll any... I mean, I could sample somebody's voice and then put that in a song and then copyright the song... And then have them take down anywhere that person's like, where they said that, like if somebody has a catchphrase or something, right? Just sample that. It's Carol Baskin move. <sighs> There's more though. Uh, actually, this one, this one is actually uh, uh, fake, but um, pretty funny. This guy says, I guess cooking streams aren't allowed on Twitch anymore. I made a smoothie and my blender was flagged as a Skrillex song. 
2012 memes. Uh, <laughs> but in real, but in real shakedowns, uh, here's somebody. Haley says, uh, "I just got a DMCA strike on a VOD from July 2015 that I deleted." So this is happening. This is happening. Like. To a lot of people, um, it says update. I spoke with Twitch and they're insisting it was a legit takedown. The link in the email doesn't work, obviously, uh, and doesn't specify that it's a VOD, so the content in question could all also have been a highlight. I have no way of knowing based on their email. Uh, and it says I deleted the infringing content, VODs, highlights, etc., uh, per Twitch's recommendation, including my husband's proposal to me. Spent hours going through everything. According to them, I missed one. It's only one strike, but this is still ongoing. Keep y'all posted. And even we times in, we. A Twitch employee chimes in and says that so did I. He got a takedown as well. So clearly this is something that's happening uh, to ever. And, and I, there was actually another Twitch employee that got taken down too. And he was just like, wait a minute. I, I wish I had saved the link for that one because it was something as ridiculous as um, uh, as like the one guy who was walking, who I guess was walking past a store and they were playing like a 50 cent song and he got a takedown for that. Uh, and then some other IRL user uh, or streamer uh, went into a store and was like, whoa, we can't go in here because they're playing music on the overhead radio. So this, this is a problem. As, as I said last time, this is a fucking problem that Twitch needs to solve. But they're doing a terrible job of of trying to, you know, fix this. Uh, they did put out a statement. I get it, but it's a bit much. It's a bit much. Time to move to YouTube gaming stream. At least at YouTube gaming, they just like mute it. Right? Just, you can't add, you can't put ads on this video. It's okay, fuck. Uh, so here they say, you know, they say extensively. There's a lot of tweets here, but I have an excerpt here I'll read for you guys. Uh, but they didn't put this out. People are very unhappy with this response, of course, uh, rightfully so. So it says, over the last several months, we have done our best to manage the situation on behalf of both rights holders and creators. One of the mistakes we made was not building adequate tools to allow creators to manage their own VOD and clip libraries. You're rightly upset that the only option we provided was a mass deletion tool for clips and that we only gave you three days notice to use this tool. We could have developed more sophisticated user-friendly tools a while ago that we didn't is on us. And we could have provided creators with a longer time period to address their VOD and clip libraries. That was a miss as well. We're truly sorry for these mistakes and will do better. Is there like a compilation of will do better shit like that Twitch has said? They oh, they're really hurting right now. <laughs> uh, in the responses here, in the responses here, it says uh, that uh, one of the Twitch Twitch support says uh, says is there is there a list of somewhere of music companies that would issue a DMCA? I would like to help me. It would help me know which brands not to not not to listen to, which is that's not going to happen. Like it, it could be anything anywhere. Uh, there could be some music that on a label that's not licensed and some that is. Uh, and they says, we do not have a list of companies, but we do have soundtrack available. Soundtracks, vast library of songs. We're all cleared, uh, are all cleared all for worldwide listening on your live Twitch channel. Um, we just talked, I think, in the last episode of news about an issue where the RIAA was uh, pissed off at them for not getting the proper licensing for the music that they included on um uh, in their soundtrack uh, beta app. So we don't even know if that's true. We uh, Somebody actually replied and said, there have been DMCA strikes against streamers using your soundtrack program. So even that's fucked right now. Uh, now that part, I don't know for sure, but I know when we, we saw the article of the RAA being upset about them not getting the proper broadcasting licenses and all that stuff. So you could kind of guess that maybe that's the case. Uh, so Twitch addressed the DMCA, but they did not commit to purchasing blanket licensing, did not address... Items deleted that are still visible and do not give an ETA on new tools or features that might help. Uh, still ask everyone to delete VODs clips. Just a late apology. We've had those before. Uh, let me see. It says, on DMC and Twitch, as I've said for a good while, it's important to note that all the people who say, well, I deleted the VODs and clips, so why is it still They still play the music at their time of stream. They're still breach of DMC. They, they are still guilty. Oh, man. Look at this. Look at this guy. Well, let me, let me tell, let me, let me tell you something. The problem is that a lot of this stuff, uh, actually, yeah, it, it is retroactive, right? So you can, as I showed you in the first example era, and other folks who may may think like this, because you're not the only person who thinks this. Um, S fan was streaming, and then somebody took that song, uh, a song from the game, and then turned it into made a trap remix. And guess what? He got hit. Could have got could have got a DMCA. Just muted vibe, but he could have got a DMCA for it. Um, 
let me see. We also have the uh, uh, music and games. Cyberpunk 2077 actually has a, an option to turn off licensed music for streamers. So that's, um, that is, I mean, it's sus, man. Like, we shouldn't be at that point where games are having to mute their own music. Even Twitch support in this thread. Even they say to turn off in-game music. Let me fucking find it here. Uh, let me see. Retraction, library. Uh, let me see. Uh, here we go. I recommend muting the audio at the time or if the games offer stream mode to enable that. So, no. <laughs> I'm not saying that there are not abuse of the DMCA, but if you're sitting and playing random artist songs while playing a game, that's, that isn't in-game. Sure. But the examples that I've given you, uh, especially with S-Fan and, and a couple others, were from people that you know, like walking around in real life and then a song plays in the background, right? It's like that that's being hit with DMCA shit and and not being countered effectively. Yeah, though there's the, the system has has a problem. And they're trying they're trying desperately to uh not do anything about it. Justin Wong, former executive at Twitch, we brought him we we bring him up most uh, a lot on the show because um well, because he knows what he's talking about. Um, he says, Twitch went from less than one DMCA notice per week to thousands in May. They sat on them for five months before releasing en masse, uh, giving creators three days to scan, archive, and delete up to nine years of streams with no way to identify infringing content. Then took three weeks to write a blog post. And then he further says, Twitch has almost 150 openings on twitch.tv slash jobs, including six in Twitch music. And as far as I can tell, not a single one even mentions DMCA. We can only conclude they plan to handle this with existing resources. For GlitchCon this Saturday, Twitch is putting in on 40 hours of original programming featuring 140 creators and 18 official co-streamers. They built a site with a three-day Easter egg code hunt. Uh, such a massive disparity in outward facing communication compared to their DMCA response. I know for a fact DMCA is not an easy problem and there are many talented people who care dip deeply working hard at Twitch behind the scenes. The severe lack of outward transparency and communication undermines their efforts as well as Twitch's own reputation with the community. So, I mean, he even says right here that they've known since May. Uh, at least started in May. Remember, we we did have a little of a DMC apocalypse thing happen. Uh, I think earlier in the pandemic, but yeah, man, they really fucked up. And you know, it was addressed. It was addressed by Emmett Shear at GlitchCon. So let's go ahead and was this uh, recently viewed fuser on YouTube? Very cool. Oh, uh, but Twitch should probably just put that game on the ban list. Save everyone the trouble. Uh. Regardless of what you think the EMCA should be doing, we all knew this was coming, but most people were like, man, whatever. You can't, it, the thing is, you can't, I understand what you guys are saying. You're trying, you're, but you're trying to say that you're, you're not addressing the bigger picture, you know? There are opportunities of people for, for DMCA from people just walking around outside because a car drove by and is playing some popular song, right? Hi, babe. There wasn't room for ice? Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Hold on a second. Drink's coming in. One second. Ooh, thank you. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. There's ice. Thank you, babe. This is, um, I have to finish off the margarita, guys, so, you know. There's too many opportunities for DMCA to, to be DMCA just by walking around outside and having music played. At a store, car driving by, or whatever. So, yes, there are artists, myself included, right, who have played copyrighted music in the past. Uh, I went through the steps that they suggested, which is delete everything. So I did. I deleted. All, I deleted all my highlight. I think uh, almost all of my highlights, majority of my clips, and um, obviously all my vods. Uh, I backed them up. I put them on on YouTube where they're up there. They're fine. They're not muted or anything on YouTube, of course. YouTube has a better system, um, but <laughs> it's you. Can't, you can't lump them all together. You got to. You have to address the whole thing. It's 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 DMCA is a law. It's not like a DMCA for these guys and whatever. Like we have to look at this whole thing and like find a solution that works for everybody. Uh, yeah, the people who play music, you know, they get busted. They get a DMCA takedown. That, that they deserve it, right? Myself again, myself included. Um, but it's still too. It's there's not enough 
people involved in the review process. And that's really that's really the biggest problem. There's not enough people. And as Justin Wong has pointed out, uh, there's nobody hiring in there for the well, as far as we can see, they're not hiring anybody to work in the DMCA review you know, department, whatever that might be. Uh, we're going to talk about DMCAs on IRL streams. You'd have to have actual people review these streams and manually identify if it was intentional infringement or, or if it was something out of streamers control. Number of streamers versus number of people monitor that it'd be unrealistic to do. So we're stuck with an automated system. You see, and that's going to kill, that's going to kill IRL streaming. Uh, that's going to kill a, a lot of different types of streaming, actually, uh, because you just can't do it. Somebody, somebody, somebody who still thinks it's 2007 is going to have their favorite song as the ringtone. It's going to go off. Person's going to get hit with a live takedown. You know, you can't do it, man. Like this, this system needs work. System needs work. Someone lives in Colorado. I've been able to escape people talking about In-N-Out for a week. It's a play. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, In-N-Out's delicious. I'm sorry that you have a 14-hour wait there. Uh, it, it's great. I don't know if it's worth 14 hours, but it's good. Animal style. Double-double uh, animal style. That's, that's, the, that's what you get. Um, five Guys is better anyways. Mm, I mean, they're good, too. You get peanuts at Five Guys, you know? Uh, it's down to a 12-hour wait. Oh, good. Good. It's still worth though. It did, I'll go. Uh, maybe streamers should just pay game companies to play their games and play the music on streams. That's right. So we did get over at GlitchCon segue. Uh, we did get uh, uh, well, we did get a collection of of clips that are quite hilarious because well, because the live event and Twitch is trying, but they're gonna have weird cringe moments. Here's the intro. Hey everybody. Welcome to GlitchCon. I think that it's just amazing that we all made it through the portal together here. Thank you for being here in chat with me for the very first ever GlitchCon. And congratulations on figuring this portal out together these past few days and making it through to this side. We're all here in this other dimension now, so that is cool. No need to look out your windows or anything. I am definitely an authority on theoretical physics, as you can tell by this bow tie. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't stream ever. Exactly. Oh my god. Oh. oh. Did he not read the script before? It's painful. It's that was a painful one. I sorry. I, I had to do it. You had to watch. No. There's more. Okay. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. I mean, overall, overall, it was a good event, right? It was the best thing you could do. That's not. That's not you know going to actual TwitchCon. TwitchCon is a positive event. I love the energy there. It's great and all that stuff. They tried to capture that online, but some of the shit that happened is hilarious. So we gotta talk about it. So <laughs> now he did. He did go on. He did finally make it down to the some at some point in the teleprompter where he does start to talk about um, about DMCA and he says, "If you receive a DMCA takedown, you should be able to know exactly what the content is." Or if you believe you are authorized, you should know how to contest the takedown. And I think it's a failing of our email to creators on October 20th that we didn't include enough of this information. And it's an issue with our current systems that we're working to improve. Since May, we've seen and been required to process an unprecedented number of DMCA takedown notifications targeting clips and to a lesser extent what other Wong video on about. demand content. This has also been a situation we haven't dealt with before, where representatives of major record labels have suddenly taken an interest in enforcement action against content this community created years ago. We should have had better tools ready for you to manage your content. And we wish we did. We're sorry those tools weren't available when you needed them, and that so many creators had to delete their videos, capturing their community's best moments and accomplishments. That's that's really, that's the biggest shit of this whole thing, really, is that so many creators had to delete memories that they've created over the past, you know, however many years. Like, that... You're just erasing. I understand that Twitch is a live platform, but come on, dude. And then later, later this comment was made, and I feel like this is very disjointed, but then later he says this. With uh, 2020, has been a uh, tremendous year for music on Twitch. For a long time. It's been a tremendous year for music on Twitch. <laughs> so much uh, so, we might just not have music next year. It's been so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's still channel streaming TV shows. I'm sorry, we need to figure it out years ago when our creators told us it'd be an issue down the road. I know, it's like we didn't know that YouTube was a thing. Oh my gosh. So... Yeah, he does. He does go on. He talks about not having tools. Basically, recapping the stuff that's put in that tweet. Uh, Justin Wong was right. Yeah, they were sitting on thousands of uh, requests from record labels uh, for DMCA. Um, it's uh, song request was a big hit. Exactly, <laughs> it's a huge hit. Oh man, just uh, that one hit the top. The, oh, the the music one hit the top of live stream fails. Let me see how many views does it have. Does it say anywhere on here? It's one hundred sixty three thousand views. Yep, it definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely hit the top of LSF, that's for sure. Uh, so there, there were other moments. There were other moments that um, there, were, there was a talent show that happened, uh, and in the talent show we had a performance. Uh, we had a couple of performers here. Let me see uh, which one is this one. Uh, let me see. Is this the one here? Mm -hmm. Let me see. So we had a couple of contestants that came on this talent show. I had like T Pain, Andy Milakis, and all that, like uh, doing the actual. Here we go. It's pretty talented stuff, right? Well, we also have, we also, I mean, we also have, uh, magic, right? This nigga's a devil. He's a devil. I know it. I know it. <laughs> 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 uh, those two beefs at the end will get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, T, T Pain. So T Pain was actually like a really good addition to this lineup that they had. He hosted a lot of stuff here, and he was actually a really good addition to this lineup. He's, he's a very personable character, and, uh, uh, well, person, um, and uh, so I think he was a he was a good mix here. But there was there was one performance that stood out to to a lot of people for the wrong reasons. Uh, so this uh, uh, this contestant Julie Julia East with lots of A's E's and T's, um, she forgot to plug in her looper. So just so you guys understand how this works, um, uh, there are lots of artists out there who use a looper where they talk into something. And then, or they make you know, beatbox or something into a sing, and they'll sample it and they'll loop it over and over again. Um, I'm sure some of you guys will probably name a few right now. Uh, so this is this is it's a piece of hardware or a, or a series of, of hardware that you use in order to create these effects and everything. Loop Daddy. Um, well, somebody forgot to plug it in. I'm just gonna go over here. Because they couldn't reach her, they couldn't. They couldn't get a hold of her. They couldn't tell her that it wasn't working. It wasn't working the way it was supposed to. At first, they were like listening, and they were like, "Okay, something's gonna happen." And then nothing happened. And yeah, like T Pain jumped on it right away. Obviously, as a musician, uh, and he was like, "Please, oh God, stop! It's not working." <laughs> but but I mean, for a little bit of redemption, a little bit of redemption, she did come back and she she played again at the end of the set. Um, and here's what it's supposed to sound like. It's actually quite good. 
Thank you, kittens. Brave to come back after how embarrassing that would have been. I know. I know. I know it's embarrassing. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. But rest assured, or you should know, that she won. She actually won the contest, um, which I think net her like $10,000 or something like that. So, I mean, I'll embarrass myself in front of a couple hundred thousand people for uh, for $10,000. Absolutely. <laughs> and nobody would fault me for it. So good for her. Uh, you know, it's funny, actually, you know, I was watching this at, a, we were watching this live at a friend's house and we were dying. We were dying. <laughs> we were, we were just like, we cringe ourselves into the corner of the couch. It's like, oh God, stop. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, looking at the gear that she has, like, you know, it, she has like an SP 303 sampler, I think, which is like a couple hundred bucks. She has like a foot pedal, uh, board that she's using to trigger certain things. Um, like the. She already has the talent and the technical wherewithal of how to use loopers and all that stuff effectively. Uh, getting getting ten thousand dollars to put towards maybe a, some more gear, but she doesn't need ten thousand dollars for that. Um, <clears throat> like that's going to um, like that's going to really elevate her music. So so good for her, and also again good for her to like, coming back and and like you know <laughs> tackling that uh, and re and re uh, retrying. Um, but T Pain then go then uh, follows up and he says that not related to this. Kind of we're moving on from that, but uh, uh, T Pain, for those of us who are looking for more music to stream uh, without DMCA, comes out and says, "All set. night you're gonna be hearing the Pizzle Pack Volume Two, and also the Pizzle Pack Volume Two is available right now. Brew and the crew is Pizzle Pack Volume Two ready right now? Yeah. Cool. I can't hear you." Fantastic. Now, on the Pizzle Pack Volume 2, there is 169 DMCA free tracks available for you right now. You go to PizzlePack.com, P-I-Z-Z-L-E, Pack. Dot com and you <laughs> capitals <laughs> so yes he does have a ton of tracks here a ton of tracks you go through and you can just use these wherever you want i'm actually gonna bookmark this for myself i'll play one real quick I'll skip around a little bit they're gonna be they're gonna be of a certain style for sure but um like I said yesterday, we were talking about this. Uh, yeah, I, you guys can use my music for stuff, but just my music is going to get boring, right? So why don't you sprinkle in the Pizzle Pack? Why don't you sprinkle in, if you have, if you paid for Monster Cat, <laughs> if you paid for Monster Cat, why don't you go ahead and throw that in the mix too? Um, so, yeah, you could you, there's, there's options. options. You want to diversify your portfolio, right? 200 BPM, that's right. Thank you, Clay. That's right. There's no negative pH, but still, oh, <laughs> my music never gets bored. Oh, you guys are great, but still, you want to mix it up a little bit, you know? So just kind of get some different beats in there. So yeah, royalty-free streamer beats by T Pain. What a good guy. Told you guys he was a good guy. Uh, let me see. Uh, but yeah, GlitchCon, GlitchCon definitely has has its issues. There is more. There's more. There's more. GlitchCon was where everything was happening this past weekend, right? Mixing Mike's magic yesterday, making good work of it. Ooh, were you? Ooh. I love to see how you handle those songs that uh, have like BPMs that shift all over the place. <clears throat> so GlitchCon obviously suffered more than just a teleprompter issue with Emmett. Uh, it also suffered some weird like repeating issues that seemed like glitches. You couldn't tell if it was part of the show or not. Well, oh, yeah. Excited. All right. Well, with that. Twitch Rivals starts in five, four, three, two, one. Just 
of all the times to have an issue like this. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Twitch Rivals. <laughs> That's right. Welcome everyone to Twitch Rivals, XQC's favorite events at TwitchCon. Or all year, I should say. Oh, man. So, if you don't know, if you don't know, Twitch Rivals is a series of competitive events designed from the ground up for Twitch streamers and viewers. 2020 will include... Wow, that's bright. Ah! Uh, will include... <laughs> Uh, over 100 event days featuring new formats, games, interactive extensions, and millions of dollars in prize money. So, Fall Guys had an event that they hosted on a public server, public game. Um, now, one of the issues I have with Fall Guys, you know, right off, right off the bat, was the fact that you couldn't make a private game, right? Uh, you really also shouldn't, like make a competitive with money's on the line type of esports event in a public game. It just it just doesn't make a lot of sense. You're bound to get sniped. Something's bound to happen. Um, and of course, XQC, well, not of course, but uh, it just so happens that XQC is one of those kind of guys. Uh, now, XQC, if you're not familiar, XQC is uh, the most watched streamer on Twitch. You could argue that he is actually the biggest streamer on Twitch right now. Uh, and I could say that because he's at the top of this list that says most watch over the past seven days at 2,000, 2 million, sorry, 773,373. Uh, peak viewers, average viewers of 54,000. So <clears throat> he is, uh, he's the most watched and least understood streamer. He's this is just this is just another another content creator named Felix starting trouble again. God, those guys, those Felixes. Who? Garbage incarnate. People have people have opinions on on this guy for sure. For sure. I have my own. But um here's what he did during a live event where Dr. Lupo, who is the uh the latest doctor that uh, represents Twitch similar to the U.S. government, uh, that they're trying really hard to make relevant. And, um, well, he was competing. And this happened. Uh, bullet and a monkey. Now, this audio is going to be a bit weird because it's like, it's, and this also could be, I'm just going to, this is also pretty meta because we're watching Train watch Dr. Lupo and watch XQC. So this is, there's multiple layers here. Somebody might actually take this clip that we're recording right now. I do a commentary on top of that. Um, so just bear with me. He did manage to get into the game. He is Tyler one. Sorry, uh, Tyler one. Jesus. Uh, he did manage to get in the game. Uh, he did. Um, he, he does know who Dr. Lupo is in terms of like their character, what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> and so he's right there. It's the bullet. So right uh, right here, I know it's like 360p, uh, but yes, right here is is where he's at. So he's deliberately going out of his way to hunt him down and try to and try to capture him. And if you go over here, you can see he's waiting at the end. Which if you've played, if you we'll stop hold it. If you played Fall Guys, you know what he's doing, waiting at the end here. And so he waits for him to come over, and then uh uh uh, where is he at? Right there. I think he falls right here. Actually, oh, God. <laughs> Fast forward a little bit. <laughs> there he is. Okay. So he runs over. <clears throat> and here's Dr. Lupo's stream. He does catch him. Uh, there's still nine more people that could get in. So it, it doesn't affect the outcome at all. But he's still kind of a dick for doing this. Um, and uh, Tyler One's really mad about this. Like, which he, he's like this about just about everything. I can't. <laughs> I said, did XQC cheat Overwatch too? I don't know about that. Tyler definitely had choice words. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at his face. <laughs> what is Tyler not? Oh yeah. Tyler's never not mad. That's true. That's true. He always delivers on that. He's always cause he's consistent. He's a consistent streamer. So here's the backstory. All right. <clears throat> 
Uh, during the tournament, XQC was being griefed by tons, tons of stream snipers since the lobby was public. Then, when he got eliminated, he checked the mainstream where he discovers that everyone was helping Dr. Lupo win the crown. Like, literally waiting to let Lupo jump for the crown. XQC felt it was unfair, so he decided to snipe as well, which was totally wrong. Why did they even make the tournament public? Uh, the tournament was rigged before it even started. So, <clears throat> everyone everyone was sniping except for on XQC side. They were hurt. They were they're obviously you know pulling him back. Uh, but on Doctor Lupo's side, they were trying to help him help him win. Um, so I think he was a little upset about that. He was being treated unfairly, right? This is why Fall Guys is dying. Dying. They need a private server. Also, the reason Among Us is better than Fall Guys. Try joining a public lobby without the code and Among Us. Good luck. Good luck. So. <clears throat> So Twitch did come out. They did come out with a um, oops. This is fucking Tyler's face. Let's go leave that up. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to find a higher res copy of this and just use that face for my thumbnail. Um, so they uh, they did come out with a statement. Twitch rivals Twitter. Official Twitter did come out and they said that uh, at GlitchCon our player conduct rules were violated. We require all participants to abide by the same rules in order to play in a tournament. As a result, XQC has been issued a temporary Twitch account suspension, a temporary Twitch rivals ban, and forfeited associated prize money. So, <clears throat> the fact that there's money involved, right? Which means Dr. Lupo could have won money or whatever. I think it goes maybe it goes to charity or something. I don't know. But um, uh, the fact that there's money involved and they were trying to help Dr. Lupo like make it through. It's like, uh, I mean, you could you also make the, the case that people were helping the same way that they were trying to hurt. Uh, it shows who he really is, knows it's wrong, and he does it to retaliate to someone who had nothing to do with his own issue. It's true. No, I mean, I, I'm not a fan of XQC. Um, but, but listen, okay? If you cheat... If you cheat or you try to gain uh, an unfair advantage in video games, you are an insecure trash person. And it's probably why, it's probably why you fail at other fields, according to XQC. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Chat, thank you so much for hanging out here today. <laughs> Cheaters are butts. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. Hang out for a little bit. We'll chill after this. I got to finish this uh, margarita. Uh, but uh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding,